Hey, loser. What are you doing here, midget? We don't want you here anymore. Get out of here, loser. Stop it. Shut up. Surprise, midget. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Kick his ass. Chill at wimp no mercy. Please, stop it. You see, that's the difference between us, Paul. I face my problems head on. And you? You run away from them. Cowering in fear, like a little pussy. All because you can't bring yourself to face the consequences of your actions. Goodbye, Paul. And remember, you only have yourself to blame for this. No. I'm not going back. I'm never going back. It was just another nightmare. Every night I'm going on the grid, texting back. I want you. Hit you up, I'm on the other side I miss you, miss you Take you off, I came your way to strong Cannot keep below After we get our food, let's check out the spirit games Yeah sure, that sounds like fun Is that Paul over there? I wonder if he's feeling okay He's been spending so much time by himself during lunch and in English class, it seems like he's off in his own world or something. And he barely says more than a few words to me when I go talk to him. Could be he's not getting enough sleep. Maybe he's an insomniac. I suppose it's possible. But it just seems like he's been that way ever since school started. And that was a little over a month ago. You think maybe those two kids who harassed him before might have started bothering him again? Brianna and Mason? No I don't think that's it. He and Mason pretty much buried the hatchet after that whole thing was over. And if Brianna was causing trouble again, I think he would have said something to me by now. There has to be something else that's bugging him. Why don't you go talk to him? I think I will. You don't mind? No of course not Jess. I mean from what you tell me, he seems comfortable confiding in you more than anyone. Go on. I'm gonna go and track down Dennis. We'll be watching the games. Thanks Jason. It shouldn't be too long. I'll join you guys in a bit. Cool. Hey Paul, what's up? Not now, Jessica. The spirit games are about to start. Wanna come and see them with us? I'm even thinking of participating. No. I just want to be alone right now. What's bothering you Paul? Nothing. You can go ahead and enjoy watching the spirit games. I'll do that later. But right now, I can see that something's clearly bothering you, and I want to help. I said it's nothing. Look, I appreciate everything you do. Especially when you help me with Mason and Brianna. But right now I don't need your help. You can't expect to be able to help all the time. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap like that. Please, just leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. And, I don't think you can help me either. But, I appreciate you offering though. Paul, just hear me out. I know you might think it's not anything important, and doesn't need to be discussed. But whatever it is, it's obviously affecting you. Or maybe I'm way off base here. And you probably just feel bad because you lost your new video game or something. But even so, I'd still like to at least help you feel better. After all, that's what friends do, right? You're right Jessica. Something is bothering me. And, I haven't been completely honest with you about Wilford Heights. What do you mean? Well, I've been having these nightmares lately. And I think I know why. What are the nightmares about? Well, 
It usually starts out with me walking through a hallway at school. And then a bunch of people crowd around me. And they just start calling me names, and insulting me, and even attacking me. But last night, Brianna was there. Taking part in it too. And Mason was with her. Mason was tormenting you too? But aren't you guys cool now? Yeah. But he wasn't tormenting me. In fact, he was the only one who wasn't. He just stood there, looking down at me with this kind of sad, guilty look. And then suddenly, I heard this voice. I couldn't tell if it was coming from inside my head or what. But I heard it very clearly. It was. It was him. Who's him? Well, it's a long story. And I don't want to keep you away from the spirit games. I'll tell you later. No, it's okay Paul. I would like to hear it now. That is, if you're up for telling it. Okay. I guess the best way to do it, is to start from the beginning. It was three years ago. I was starting sixth grade at a new school, with my best friends at the time. Simon. So, new school, new friends, new adventures. I'm really looking forward to it all. Yeah. I mean, school isn't exactly the most fun place in the world. But I'm glad you're here to get through it with me. Ha. Huh. If you're looking for someone to survive the education system with, I'm not exactly the best choice. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, if you aren't the best choice, then I suppose you're better than the best. Well, if you're done complimenting me on my awesomeness, I believe we have a school to get to. Right. Let's get going. I guess this is our front door. I remember it was a pretty good first day for me and Simon. We had a couple classes together, we had some cool teachers, we hung out at lunch together, talked about video games, stuff like that. And I remember thinking, 6th grade might be my best year yet. After the final bell rang, I waited for Simon, so we could walk home together. Hey Paul, ready to split? Yup. So, pretty good day? Yes. I mean aside from that one kid in math class, my day was pretty great. What did the kid in math class do? You don't want to know. So we continued walking home. And all of a sudden, someone walked up behind us. Completely catching us off guard. <clears throat> when we turned around, there was about four older boys. Just standing there, looking down at us. Simon and I just stood there. Not really knowing what to do. And I remember thinking, that one of the boys, stood out from the rest. He was the tallest and thinnest one and his clothes and face were all dirty. I don't know what it was about that guy. I just knew that there was a real sense of dread hanging in the air. <laughs> 